Hi everyone, Pete here. Today we're gonna to be working with some pork tenderloin. I love this because it's very versatile. Sometimes I can find it on sale and it just cooks up lovely. I'm gonna show you how to work with it today. We have two very beautiful fresh pork tenderloins that we're gonna be working with. As you can see with this pork tenderloin, we have two different types of connective tissue. This would be referred to as collagen. I usually like to take some of this collagen off because you don't need it, especially with this particular cut. And then we also have another type of connective tissue. This is referred to as elastin, the connective tissue that is really tough and chewy. Think of gristle. This type of elastin here is referred to as silver skin. So it's a very thin membrane, but it's very, very tough and chewy, so you'll wanna remove it. I just take my boning knife here. It's a very, very sharp knife and you wanna be very, very careful when you're working with this because you don't wanna cut yourself. So what I try to do is I just try to get the surface of my pork tenderloin very, very flat so I can cut through the elastin more efficiently. And I'm just gonna come in underneath my silver skin and I try to stay as close to the silver skin as possible and I'm just going to cut it out like that, okay? And then I'm gonna pull it tight very carefully removing it, okay? And that way, I'm not gonna have tough and chewy meat. When you go to cut this meat, you have to make sure you're cutting against the grain. Meat is made up of long, thin fibers that are bound together. We want to identify which way these fibers are running. So I can see here that the grain of meat and the fibers are running this way. So when I go to cut the meat, I wanna cut the opposite way cutting against the grain. Now the next thing I want to do is season this meat. And remember folks too, you want to make sure that you're washing your hands throughout the cooking process so as not to cross contaminate. I'm going to just season this up with a little bit of salt, not too much, and a little bit of freshly crushed black pepper. And just get that all over the meat. As you can see here, I've got a good quality pan. It has a thick bottom on it. That way I'm not gonna scorch the meat when I go to sear it. Before I put the meat into this pan, I wanna make sure that I have a medium. And in this case, we're gonna use olive oil. If I put the meat into a very, very hot pan without something in between the pan and the meat, the meat will scorch. I don't want the olive oil so hot that it's smoking, but I do want the pan good and hot so that I can sear this meat properly. If the pan is not hot enough, then my meat will start to release water and I won't get the caramelization and I will not get the searing action that I want. Searing means getting the meat brown on all sides too. When the oil starts to shimmer, that is a good indication that the pan is good and hot. I'm now gonna place the meat into the pan. Be very careful when you're searing it off, the oil could spit up at you. I can see here that my meat is lifting off the pan very easily and I'm just going to flip it over. As I can see here, lots of nice browning on our meat. I'm starting to develop caramelization. When roasting meats, you want the meats elevated in the pan. In this case, I'm going to use some onions. So our pork is nice and browned and seared off on all sides. I'm gonna add the onions into my pan. You wanna make sure that the onions are cut in an appropriate size. If I cut the onions too largely, then they won't cook fast enough. Into the oven we go. Here's a tip, folks. Anytime that you're pulling a hot roasting pan or a pan out of the oven, make sure that you're using a clean and dry oven mitt or kitchen towel. Water conducts heat, so if, if it's wet, you could hurt yourself. So I'm just gonna check to make sure that this pork is thoroughly cooked. I'm gonna put it into the fattest part of the pork tenderloin and I have to bring it to a minimum of 160 degrees Fahrenheit, 71 degrees Celsius, minimum of 15 seconds. Oh, it's absolutely perfect. I always make sure that I clean my thermometer before and after every use and that way it's guaranteed that it is sanitized, okay? Very important step. I'm gonna pull out my pork tenderloin and I'm gonna let it rest. The reason I'm letting it rest is I want to allow the juices to be distributed throughout the meat. If I start cutting into it right away, the, the juices are going to just start pouring out of this meat here and it will be dry and chewy. You can see here we have a lot of caramelized 
juices here, I want to use this. Liquids that you can use to deglaze, water or beef stock, just to name a few. I'm gonna use beef stock for this. So you just wanna use a wooden spoon to lift up all the caramelization. And look at our beautiful onions here, which is gonna be absolutely delicious. That's ready to go. So our pork tenderloin is done roasting and it's done resting. And I'm just going to start to carve it. So as you can see here, I can see the grain of my meat is running this way here. So I want to cut against the grain. Remember, if you cut with the grain, your meat will be chewy. So I'm just going to slice it against the grain. It's going to be nice and tender. And I'm going to serve this with a plate of uh, soba noodles with some nice vegetables. And we're going to serve it with some of these lovely pan juices with onions. The pan juices will keep everything nice and tender. There's lots of meat here. So leftovers are great on a pizza, wrap, salad, or sandwich. I hope you enjoyed this and feel a bit more confident to try this or other new cooking techniques. Eat well, live well.